It's hard to read when you're looking at it. Yeah. Okay, we'll call our meeting to order. Uh, consider consent calendar, approval agenda, and minutes. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll uh, second that. Okay, I'll approve. Claims? Any questions? Actually, just one suggestion, if we could... In the future, if we could parse those uh, columns, it's hard to read. It's really hard to read this way. <laughs> yeah, this was hard. Uh, it was hard for me to decipher. And I think it's just a matter of, I think you can go in there and parse it or whatever. Yeah, he said he corrected we, it already. Yeah, I we, asked him about that. When they send them to us, we've, we've got it figured out. Okay. Uh, they, if you look at your screen, here's a better. Oh, yes. Much better. <coughs> yep. Okay. I thought maybe they were trying to hide something on us. I didn't want us to read it. Let me know when you'd like to go to the next page. Next maybe. page. Yeah. Yep. Fine. Just all normal stuff. Yeah, that looks, yeah, that looks good too. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the claims. And I'll second. Okay, I'll approve. Good. City Finance Office report. Um, next month, I will have your quarterly, uh, third quarter reports for you, and so there will be a little more discussion. So. Okay. Thank you. Customer concerns? Everybody's happy around here? <laughs> sure. So we've been uh, working on, still working on the punch lists for the developments that have gone in this summer. Um, seems to be a little slow catching up on them. I think all of our contractors are awful busy, though. Um, our meter supply issue is, is not improving. <laughs> the latest numbers I have for, for meters, a, a, a general meter, a normal meter for normal residential occupancy, we're looking at 30 weeks out if I were to order today. 30 um, weeks. And <clears throat> that's that's not as big of an issue as since we are a radio read system. Beyond the meter, you need the little computer box, the smart point. And those darn things are 42 weeks out. Uh, this computer chip shortage is having an effect on on everybody with meters. Uh, fortunately, if somebody's doing large construction, meters over one inch in size are only 12 weeks out. And um, our fancy meters that allow us to shut off the water remotely through the meter are only 15 weeks out. So trouble with going to those is uh, they're considerably more expensive than a general residential meter. Um we have still been having a rash of service line leaks. I say rash, it isn't enormous, but we've, we've had two since the last time we met. Um, they, it's just aging infrastructure for the most part. For whatever reason, this summer was conductive or conducive to those service lines not wanting to hold water anymore. We had, uh, one is going to be dug up on Monday through a contractor. Uh, we were fortunate with the age of the curb valve and the fact that it didn't want to operate. Instead of muscling it and breaking it, um, our penetrating fluid and a week of 
muscling it, <laughs> but not to the point of breaking, was able to operate it. So we saved, we saved digging a hole there. We have, a, unfortunately, a fire hydrant got hit in the snow. Um, well, it got hit, and we're going to have to dig that up this week and, and try to remedy the situation. It isn't leaking, but it is it is a concern. And other than that, we're, we got a couple little patches to tidy up that I've got scheduled for this week if everything goes well. Todd, what's the typical materials that are in these service lines that are breaking it? Is it variable, kind of different? Is it like PVC? Some... It's uh, the prominent culprit has been uh, galvanized lines. Galvanized. Okay. And that's the, uh, the longevity of galvanized just, it's well exceeded its life expectancy, okay. Okay. to be honest with you. It, it, um, but we've had a couple anomalies, um, a fairly new construction. There was a, a pinch, a foot outside of the curb stop. It was nice, new, fairly new one-inch copper. And just with the little pinch, the water flowing through was able to develop a pinhole. Um, but prominently, it is galvanized. And the more of that we can get replaced, the easier adhering to our lead and copper rules that are coming forward. It's going to make our life a lot better there. Yeah, but that's going to be on the, the property owner, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yep. Anything else? Good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and, and a clarification, the, the city's responsibility ends at the curb stop, and from the curb stop to the house, that would be the citizen or the landowner, homeowner's uh, responsibility. Okay, thank you. Okay, public works. Good morning. Uh, just one one point of clarification too. When we talked about the uh, fire hydrant that was hit, uh, that was not caused, not hit by a vehicle. That was hit by snow removal equipment um, from a private company. Uh, one of the things we're going to be working on seems like we're getting a lot of damage. Uh, you know, it's part of that work smarter, not harder philosophy. But people are using big equipment on our sidewalks. Uh, they hit stuff like that, and they don't even know they hit it. Uh, that appears to be what happened on that fire hydrant is uh, it's right next to a big snow bank that was piled up by a skidster. He probably backed into it and didn't even know it, uh, moved the, the, fire, the whole entire fire hydrant uh, by about four or five inches. Uh, so luckily it didn't break uh, as far as we know, but we'll be digging that up, uh, trying to fix it. It's actually where two of our – an old line – it's a dead end of an old line and where our new line on Davenport came down and ended when we did the uh, phase one and phase two projects about, uh, oh, I suppose it's been about 10 years ago. So uh, we do, we, we did get lucky and have a redundancy there where we have a new fire hydrant right across the street. So this one we're actually going to take out and cap the line. Um, hopefully we don't run into the problems that uh, Todd was discussing earlier. Um, Depending on what that line is, if it's old, cast iron, whatnot, uh, getting the parts to do it may become a difficulty. Uh, so we're going to dig it up first and see what's there uh, before we make a decision on how to make that repair. Uh, moving forward, our I-90 project, uh, getting water uh, up to the Hidden Hills and to the uh, North Avalanche area, the uh, Boring underneath the interstate has been completed. Uh, everything went well on that. They're actually working this week on doing the sewer uh, boring. And what they end up doing is they put in an oversized line. Uh, for example, the water bore, uh, the casing is 30 inch. Of course, the, the water line won't be that big. And then they use uh, their kind of a, a wedge that goes in there. And, and that, that enables them to get the line at the at the right grade. They get these wedges that are made. 
specifically for the grade and, and their different offsets. Uh, so that's going well. Uh, all of the shop drawings have been improved for the booster station. Uh, so the booster station is in production. That gets made in uh, Mitchell is where that comes out of. So that's the next key is getting the booster station here. Uh, it'll arrive on a skid. It'll be a whole contained system, the building, the pumps, everything. Once they put that in, then likely they'll start digging uh, the water line. They were supposed to uh, start on that foundation or the slab for that, that skid uh, this week, I haven't seen any dirt turn, but I do see uh, the contractor's trailers out there. So I suspect uh, they'll get going on that here rather quickly. Uh, lead time for that booster station is probably in the six-month uh, range to have that built. That's not an on-shelf. It's built specifically <laughs> for the water pressures and how much water we want to move. Uh, so it's not something that's just sitting on the shelf uh, being able to be put together. It's built for this project. So that'll be about available in the spring then? Uh, our contract is is April, so yeah, it'll it'll uh, hopefully here, yeah. If, if we don't run into any problems with, uh, and I haven't heard that yet on availability of the parts for that. So <laughs> Trailhead uh, subdivision is now... Uh, for the most part, been completed. We're going to be doing our final walkthrough on that uh, later this week. Um, don't foresee any issues with that one. It's went fairly well. Uh, like Todd said, we're still waiting on the uh, punch list items to be completed on the uh, the Garden Grove, which is the Davenport property, and then the, the Hillside uh, subdivision. Both of those have been uh, final walkthroughs done and punch list, and we're waiting for the punch list items to be completed on both of those. Uh, I did meet here last uh, couple weeks ago with Foth Engineering. Uh, Foth has opened up; they're a new company. Uh, they come out of the Twin Cities, and and uh, they have offices all over. Not in in the Black Hills. They just opened a office in Rapid City. Uh, last month, uh, if you guys will remember Ted Schultz, uh, he's the one that's operating this office here. He moved back and is living here in town, and and they opened an office in Rapid City. So we've got them uh, working with them on the Pine Glen extension, uh, which will be everything to the north of Dolan Creek, or to excuse me, to the south of Dolan Creek Road. We're extending water and sewer services and paving that road. Uh, so we're working on that. We've got a meeting actually next week with the uh, developer uh, to go over uh, some of the alignment and the cul-de-sac and things of that nature. Uh, but it's a pretty pretty straightforward project. Uh, we'll be hooking into that high pressure zone and bringing water over there and, and sewer. Um, Are you meeting with the existing people on the other side of that road too? At some point in time, we will. So they know uh, what's going on. Yeah, I mean, they, nothing really should change for them. For them, you just um, have better service. They'll have, well, better yeah, pressure. Right? We'll, we'll have they'll have the correct pressure. Yes. Yes. So right now they're serviced off of the old, uh, what we call the old Murray Addition infrastructure. Right. When we bought the Murray Water Company, that's still the existing uh, infrastructure there. When we tie in, we'll tie into that high pressure zone that was brought up for the Dolan Creek subdivision, which yes, will improve their their water pressure there. Um, we'll be adding some fire flow capabilities, um, you know, plowing, plowing the streets and things. So yeah, they'll, they'll get increased services plus the road will be paved. Um, once we have our meeting with the developer next week, we'll likely have a, a landowner meeting or, or whatnot it's a handful of people four or five people's all that it'll affect so that's all yep. correct What's the estimated time when that project will be it, it'll be a spring project, spring project. I mean, by the time it goes to construct we're just designing it now so it won't go to construction yeah. till spring but it will be spring okay yep i think that's uh unless you guys have any questions that's all i have for today i, I see there on on Keep forgetting subdivision there of strains. They're building a, finally putting in a twin home on where it's supposed to be. Or was that, you were talking about, anyway, they're, they're building one there. Is the water correct for that? You know, we've had so many discussions over 
the hookups on that thing. Yeah, everything should be be. He built it on a lot that had two entrances. Yes, and the and the ones that he's not are are getting vacated correctly. Okay, so yeah, okay. everything should be moving forward on that finally. Okay, yeah, I see they they were digging it and they put yep. sewer in, and that's why it made me think about water. If that was yeah, if you remember, some of those had a manifold type yep. system on them, and we had a master curb stop. Those will end up having to be vacated. Yeah. Yep. Vacated, okay. But this one happened to be one that was right. set it was up for set a twin up, home. Right. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Old business? Do we have anything? New business. Chief, pretty quiet. Hate to start something this late in the year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, other matters that may come before the MUB board. You guys have anything? Questions? I, I think at the last meeting, he, him and Mark both were present. Okay, executive session. We don't need one of those. No personnel problems. That's good. Okay, I guess we can adjourn. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, everybody. Turn the cameras off now. We can talk. <laughs>